Hi, I'm Kristen Amdahl and welcome back to my studio. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make the beautiful Annika Heart Knot Necklace. This pattern is available as an individual download or as part of my newest knitting book, Layers Knit. Information about both the pattern and the book are available in the video description along with how to purchase both of the yarns that I'll be using in this tutorial. This necklace is made using the simplest of knitting techniques, the I-cord, but it is elevated to a whole new level with a Celtic heart knot pendant and sequined textured yarns. We're going to be carrying two yarns together for this project, Be So Tender, which is my worsted weight number four organic cotton yarn, and my sequin yarn called Be So Dazzling. You could knit this with an I-cord, you could crochet it with crochet chain, or you could even just use rope or ribbons, it doesn't matter. Once you learn how to make the Celtic heart knot, you can elevate any simple materials into this gorgeous necklace. Let's get started. We'll be holding both yarns together throughout the project. We're going to start with a slip knot. Insert your slip knot onto your knitting needle. You can use double point needles or circular needles for this project. The only thing that wouldn't work is straight needles. We're going to work, increase four stitches from the one, and in order to do that, we're going to knit, purl, knit, and purl all into that first stitch. So let me show you how to do that. Insert your needle, yarn over, pull up a loop. That was with the yarn in the back for a knit one. Now we're going to move our yarn to the front of our needle to purl one into that same stitch. Then move the yarn to the back to knit into that same stitch again and move the yarn to the front to purl into that same stitch again, and then we will drop that original stitch off the needle. We now have four stitches on our needle instead of one. Instead of turning our work, we're going to slide our stitches to the opposite end of the knitting needle, and that's how we begin our eye, our eye cord. We're going to knit all four stitches. In the beginning of an I cord, it helps to get things started if you gently pull on the tail or lower portion of your work as you go. At the end of each row, we slide our stitches to the opposite end of the needle before knitting all of the stitches. Notice how our yarn is on the opposite side of where we're going to work, and so as we pull it over, that's what's going to spiral and pull our stitches together to create that beautiful cord instead of rows. So now we will knit across all four stitches. Give a little tug and slide our stitches to the opposite end of the needle. And this is what you're going to repeat for the entire I cord. You're going to need a total length of 80 inches and that's whether you do it as a knitted I cord or as a crochet chain, doesn't matter. Either way you're going to, or if you're using rope or some other material, uh, you need a total of 80 inches for this project. And then the only other thing that you'll need to know about the I-cord is that in order to taper the end to look like our tapered beginning where we started with one stitch, then increased up to four, is we're going to have to reduce our stitch count back down to one stitch. And we're going to do that with a knit four together. So we're going to insert our knitting needle into all four stitches if it helps, you can pull on your work to elongate the stitches to make room for your needle to get through all four. There we go. Then yarn over, pull through all the loops, and you have now decreased down, back down to one stitch, and you have a tapered end on both ends of your I-cord. When your I-cord is 80 inches long, you'll want to fasten off and then sew the beginning to the end of these eye cords and weave in the loose ends. Okay, this is what the finished necklace should look like. So I'm gonna put this off to the side for a second and we're going to take this second cord and we've already, it's already been made into a loop. So we're going to make sure it's laying flat. 
You want to make sure that your cords do not overlap each other. You want them to always be side by side throughout the project. So we have it folded in half and we're going to take the left side and fold it to the right and take the right side and fold it to the left like that. You want to make sure that that side that started on the right stays on the bottom and the side that started on the left wrapped around and stays fully on the top. So we now have something that looks like a pretzel or looks like the beginning of a heart. And at this point, you know, you may need to do this a couple of times to get the hang of it, but the best way to keep everything moving smoothly is to tighten up as you go. We want this to be to become tight like the finished knot in this necklace. And in order to do that smoothly, you want to keep working on your you want to keep working on keeping it tight as we go so we're going to tighten this up as we go okay so the first step is done so now the next step is to take the cord on the right and we're going to turn it towards the bottom and notice how I'm making sure that even though it's turning, I still want each side of the cord to lay side by side. It'd be really easy to make a mistake and have it turn like that, but that won't make your cord look, or your knot look nearly as pretty. So it is worth the extra effort to do this correctly. So now we're going to weave it over the bottom and the second set of cords and then work under the third set of cords like that. And as I do that, I'm holding down this side so that it stays flat. I don't want this to get twisted as it turns around. And then you want to try to pull things tighter as you go, but you don't want to get it too tight because we still need to see where we're going for this other side still. So for the second side, we're going to curl it towards the bottom. We're going to work under the first set of cords over the next set of cords under the next set of cords and over the last set of cords and there we have our finished knot now notice i don't have both sides even i have to work on tightening this still and this is something that this is where you may need to do your whole necklace more than once to get the hang of it because it, it does take a little bit of finessing to get everything tightened because even where you're pulling from here won't necessarily pull everything together. So let's see, we'll pull from. No, oh, that's pretty even. There, that looks pretty great. Now I just wanna double check that all my cords are laying flat. Yeah, they're all laying flat. So now this is the necklace that we did with the crochet chain. And here's when we did it also with the knitted eye cord. And you can see it's the exact same beautiful knot. And the beauty of it is in the fact that we had the cords laying side by side. We didn't let them twist. And that's what gives it that gorgeous texture. So after that, you'll want to refer back to your pattern for adding your jump rings and your clasp to turn this beautiful knot into a one-of-a-kind necklace. If you have any questions about this tutorial, please leave them for me in the comments. And I have some other suggested videos for you to watch at the end as well. I have thousands of videos here on my YouTube channel. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you in the next video.